and I have been in the um, for over 20 years now, well over 20 years. Um, that's a part, Ted, where you say, Regan, you don't look that old, but thanks, you missed that. No problem, buddy. Um, <laughs> you don't look that old. See, thanks, Paige. There you go. Gosh, throwing softballs today. Um, when I first got into to coaching, um, you know, I, I, I love that. I love women's basketball. I love all sports. I want to win at everything. Anybody you talk to will tell you, I, I want to win at everything. I want to win at academics. I want to win in athletics. I want to win in the community. Um, Paige will tell you all, all about our marketing campaign, but I want to win. And, and more importantly, I want to invite people along with us. Um, but how do, how do I turn that around and talk about where we've been and where we've come within equality in our programs? Um, so I'll, I'll give you a quick story. As the women's basketball coach, I went to my athletic director a number of years ago and had said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I will age myself. I used to have a, a VHS and I would, you know, play, record and do that to, to edit my film, right? Um, and so I went to my, my, my athletic director and I said, I really want editing software. And he's an old school guy. And he said, Regan, you don't need that. You got pen and paper, you're fine. Like you're doing it, like you're winning, you're, you're doing it that way. I'm like, yeah, but this would be better. Um, so I didn't get it. We hired a new men's basketball coach. He asks for it. Miraculously, we got it. Right. Um, and so that was, you know, I just wonder, you've got to be kidding me. But again, I'll take advantage of it because I'm going to get what I need to make my program successful. But in the back of my head, I'm like, that's freaking ridiculous. There's, there's no excuse that when I went as the women's coach, to do this, um, that my boss wasn't as an invested in, in, in my program. Um, and that comes down to dollars and cents, right? It comes down to who brings in the money. Um, well, we, we turned that table and we actually won more than our men and we actually were bringing in more money. So as a women's basketball coach, yay, as it, as a, at that point in time, as also the associate AD, as an administrator, that's problematic, right? Um, so as I, as I talk through some of this stuff, um, at the end of the day, when I got into administration, I learned that it's, it's about relationships. And you guys are going to hear this. You guys know this as well as I do. But what about those relationships? Um, it's about, you know, as, as you're getting into this role, as, as coaches, as I know we've got some athletic trainers, um, I know we've got some, you know, compliance people. So we've, we've got a smattering of people. The challenge that I'll put for you is to get out of your office. Get out of your office. You've got to establish relationships and you need to do that with, you need to get to know your president. For me, it's president, so I have to. Um, you need to get to know your CFO. You need to get to know your controller. You need to get to know your financial aid uh, administrator or officer or whatever they are on your campus. Um, you need to know your, your vice president of, of enrollment. Um, you know, where do all those, those things align? Um, when I first got to know our controller, it gave me a lot more insight into budgets across the board, um, which was good because again, it was the relationship of that person willing to sit down with me, talk me through it, show me the numbers, say, here's where this program's at, male to female. And I, I should, I, I forgot to say this. I was our title line coordinator for 11 years. Um, it, and, and the myriad of things that that, that, brought with it. But at the end of the day, I was also charged with the equity of our programs. Um, so it gave me the opportunity with, with that to sit down with, I said, the main person was my controller, um, who was invested, who was an athletic kind of guy and said, okay, let's look at this. How do we make this right? How can we do it? Um, and so that was invaluable to me to be able to have that conversation and to look at it objectively. Um, and then have the same conference with a conversation with my CFO um, when it came to scholarships, uh, our financial aid department actually reports to our vice president of enrollment. So the conversation went from financial aid as to where we were at scholarship wise to conversation with the VP of enrollment. Um, and, and you have to you have to go knock on their door. You have to kind of walk in and sit down and get to know them. And then once that relationship's built, they're willing to have the conversations with you to let you know where you're at. Um, when I first started doing this as associate AD, my, my boss was a little worried because he was afraid I was going to see really the difference between men's and women's basketball. It's kind of funny. He thinks I didn't already know that. I totally knew that. Um, but so I, I think it's about as, as a younger administrator or newer administrator to this area, 
it's getting to know those people. It's getting out of your comfort zone. It's it's getting known more across campus. Um, it's joining committees or having having your athletic director assign you to some of these committees. Um, you know, it be, all of a sudden you become the person around campus that people know are invested and are engaged in these areas. Um, and it's not just your athletic director or your associate athletic director, unless you, you are that. Um, so I, I think that's really one of the biggest takeaways is you have to establish these so you can have very frank conversations um, because you don't know what you don't know. Uh, I can guess where everybody was at financial aid wise. I didn't know. I could guess where the budgets were. I didn't know. Um, some programs I was pleasantly surprised. Some we had a lot of work to do. Um, which brings me to my next point of determining the priorities for both men's and women's programs. Um, as you look at the programs, I mean, realistically at the College of Idaho, I'll be very honest. I need to win in football. I need to win in men's basketball. I need to win in women's basketball. The rest, I need to do well and be competitive, but those ones pay the bills. Okay. But those programs can also help the rest of your programs. If those programs are successful, just bringing money into your department and helping you allocate that some of that out will bolster your volleyball, your softball, your baseball, your soccer programs. Um, so those programs can have a bigger impact. It will have a bigger impact for you financially in terms of sponsorships. Um, and so what are the priorities? So as we started to look at it, um, you know, what was the low hanging fruit? What was easy for us to do as an institution? Recognizing we're all, you know, we're a small private liberal arts college. We've got, you know, 1025 students. Um, so we're not big, but where can we make the impact? Is it, you know, in terms of scholarships? For us, scholarships aren't really real money. It's a discount rate. Um, so if we, so that was our first priority was to make the men's and women's scholarship equal. Um, some of them were really close. Some of them were a lot further off and we had some work to do. Um, but for the institution, but it, it also was a trade-off. So as I built, as we built some of these, we also said, okay, we're gonna increase the roster size at some of these as well. Um, so how do we help the institution in what we're doing? So it, it's always the partnership. It's always about, you know, uh, yeah, we want more scholarship dollars, but we're willing to bring in a couple more kids to help that pencil out because um, it, it's going to be about the bottom line at the end of the day. Um, and that does that work for the school? Um, when you look at facilities, I would hope by this point in time where we're at that facilities are equal, that there's not an issue with that. Um, but if you've got a, a program that's got preferential treatment or priority, I think that's an area where you can talk as well. And you talk with the coaches, you talk with your athletic director and say, okay, you know, we've got, you know, men's soccer is practicing here. Women's soccer is practicing over here. We need, we need to fix that. We need to, you know, one field's good. One field's not. Well, we got to swap them every other day, or we've got every other week or time times, that, that teams are practicing. Well, this, this team can't always have the, and we practice, we've got a nine to 11 at night time slot. They can't always have the nine to 11 slot. So we've got to adjust that. So there's equality. Um, have to look at that. Um, we have actually a, a kind of a unique situation. I don't know. It's unique. I think a lot of us have um, facilities that we contract out with our communities. Um, so for me, one of my biggest concerns is my baseball, softball facilities. Um, now we've managed to get baseball, softball, equal playing field as terms, in terms of scholarships, in terms of budget. Um, my facilities are in two different places. My women's softball is on campus, not as nice a facility. My baseball is off campus, a very nice facility. Um, either program could complain. Okay. Women's softball could look at it and say, they've got a press box. They've got, you know, purple seat backs, they've got an infield of turf, they've got a better scoreboard. Um, don't worry, as I say that, I hear it, and, and softball is a program that we are looking at and, and upgrading their facility. But at the same point, the baseball players can say, we've got to drive two miles to get to our facility, whereas women's softball can walk to it. Um, that's a concern for me. Now, 
the way that the baseball stadium has been built, it's fantastic. We have zero desire to go away from that. We've been, in, we've been very instrumental in that. But what's realistic for the institution? Well, it's probably more realistic for me to upgrade the women's softball facility to try and make that equal as opposed to moving baseball on campus and saying, well, I've got both on campus. Um, and so, again, where's the priority in that? Has to be softball for me. Um, budgets, again, I think that's kind of, that's a, a conversation with a controller to kind of say, okay, like, why is men's basketball that much different than women's basketball? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, kind of a numbers game as well. What we, the way that we leveraged it a little bit better was men's basketball at, at our campus fundraises more than women's basketball. But the money from the college, the actual budget dollars from the college is the same. That's my goal. If I can look at men's and women's soccer, I can look at baseball, I can look at golf, everybody across the board that has a male female component to it, their budgets are the same. What they do with their fundraising to go above and beyond, that's on them, that I can't control. Um, I can't control our sponsorship dollars and what that goes to. And again, that tries to be hitting, hitting a, a, a smattering of groups. Um, so that usually is not programmatic. Um, and so, so start that and then work with your, work with your athletic directors. What are the realistic goals? Like I said, for me, the realistic goal is an upgrade of the softball facility probably in three years. Um, that, you know, I would love it in one year, but at the end of the day, I have to fundraise the money to get it there. But if we don't, if we don't, the complaint that comes is going to force my hand to do it faster than I'm prepared to do, maybe not as well as I would be prepared to do. Um, and, and then the institute, it's a, it's a black mark on the institution too. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants to be at OCR explaining why you're not investing in your women's programs. Um, yeah. And so, Yep. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. If anybody has questions as we go along, please um, put them in the chat or ask. Um, I'm happy to answer as we go through. Um, and it's also recognizing where your programs are in the big picture of the institution. Um, some, you know, our athletic department, we bring in half the students. We're, we're at 50% of the institution. Um, so we're a prominent part of what we do. We're an integral part. We've, we've fought to be at the table of the conversations. Um, that was always one of my big things as I took over the associate AD and even more so as the athletic director is we didn't have somebody representing athletics in a lot of those conversations. We weren't, you know, we were there, but nobody was speaking on our behalf. Um, and so being prepared to be at those and speak on your behalf and recognizing again, so what part, what part of athletics does, does it play at your individual institutions? Um, what does that look like? Is there opportunity for growth? Um, is there opportunity for you to make a, a bigger splash? Is there opportunity for marketing? Is there opportunity for community uh, engagement? Um, what does your institution need? How can you go about it? What are the goals? What are the timeframes? Um, and be realistic. Otherwise, you're just going to be frustrated you're not going to get the budgets equal overnight if they're not already. You're not going to get the scholarships equal overnight. Um, as we started looking at it, we said, okay, this year we're going to, we're going to hit these two programs. Next year, we're going to focus on these two. The year after that, we're going to hit that. Um, so it's, it's a gradual process because we're not in a position to add it all at the same time. We just aren't. Um, and I think that's probably true for most, most of our institutions. Um, so how do you work with your administration and again, I would say your controller, your CFO, when it comes to budgetary things, um, and then you know your enrollment people as it as it comes to or financial aid comes to scholarship. Um, what's realistic? What what helps the institution and doesn't hurt it financially? Um, and, and that's kind of you know being part of the process and part of the solutions. Um, how can you help everybody hit their goals? So if if you have a, you know, again, for us, it's enrollment. Right now, in progress. I just, uh, hey, Lori, I just stepped out of a strategic planning meeting and we're talking about what programs do we want to focus on? You know, from athletic standpoint, I brought forward, you know, we need to look at beach volleyball. It's the, it's the emerging sport. Well, how does that really help the institution? And I said, well, I can, I can get 
the facility's done through fundraising. Uh, I, I can get you 16 to 18 new student athletes with only two crossing over. Does it pencil out for the institution? At the end of the day, probably not because I'm gonna spend more on a head coach. Uh, our discount rate for student athletes is pretty high. So if they're bringing in, you know, let's say $10,000 a year, um, by the time I pay for travel, pay for scholarships, uh, it might not pencil out. Therefore, I think it's a great idea. I think it's good for our conference. It's where our conference is going. I think it's good for my department. I think it would be good for the institution. I think it would be good for fundraising opportunities for us. But if it doesn't pencil out, it's not gonna happen. Um, for me, from a Title IX standpoint, having football, anytime I could add a women's sport, I think that's really important. Um, but it has to make sense for the institution. Uh, I've got one sport that I feel yeah, might not make sense for us. It is a women's sport. So I'm probably not going to cut it. But I also don't have a, a, a conference for them to compete in. It's very difficult to build a schedule. What makes sense for your institution? I don't think this one program really makes sense for my institution, but it's a women's sport and I'm kind of hamstrung because I've got football. So my numbers are skewed. So I need to add as many women's sports as I can still. Um, but like I said, I had one of my presidents say, I don't see it. I don't think it's gonna work. Um, so it's my job to bring the numbers to the table and then have that healthy discussion. And uh, as, again, some of you know me like, man, I'll go to bat for it if I really believe this is what we should be doing. But at the end of the day, if the rest of the rest of the senior staff sitting around the table says, we don't think so, then that's it. Um, doesn't mean I won't bring it back in the future because I'm a bulldog like that. Um, but I, I would say, anytime you're looking at this, how can you help the institution hit their goals, whatever they are, whether it's recruiting, whether it's fundraising, uh, you know, community engagement, um, PR, come with those plans, comes with those thoughts, come with those ideas and don't reinvent the wheel. There's plenty of people out there doing some great things that, I mean, as basketball coach, I don't know. I think I wrote one original play in my life. Um, I'm happy to go steal it from anybody else. So what does that look like? Uh, who's doing something well that you look at that and goes and, and decide that that would really be a great fit for my institution, right? That I can see fitting here. Um, I had somebody text me just last week. Hey, you should add women's rugby. Absolutely not. Does not fit. Doesn't have a place. Could be a club. That's great. I'm not in charge of intramurals and clubs. Um, but, you know, the, we've got a coach in the area who would do it. He really thinks he can recruit for you. It does not fit. It does not fit the college's mission. It does not fit the athletic department mission. Um, <laughs> it might be some low hanging fruit with some local kids. Currently, I kind of felt the same way about women's lacrosse and that has kind of died out in our area as well. Um, and, and so things that I think were are good ideas, if it doesn't fit the institution, we've talked a lot about esports. Does that fit our institution? I personally thought it did. Senior staff did not. Um, that was five years ago. It's being revisited as we speak because the numbers warrant it. And can you support it? As you look to, you know, if you're off kilter in, you know, male to female sports or, or student athletes and you're looking to add, um, you know, can the can the, the, the college or university sustain the program? Can they can they really put the money into it? Or are you going to start it? Don't start anything, you know, half-assed. I mean, nobody wants to do that. And then you're sitting there looking at student athletes as we always talk about what we wanna make sure we provide a great student athlete experience. And you're sitting there just going, well, we didn't do it. We missed it. Like I said, I've got one program. I don't think they're having a very good experience. Um, the, any of your surveys would tell you they enjoy their sport and it's good, but they want some place to play. Um, so I think anytime you can, you can have these conversations come with ideas, come with thoughts, come with solutions, you know, do a deep dive, talk amongst yourself, talk with the NAI. Um, you know, I, I just think if I'm, if I'm coming with solutions versus the problems, I, you know, if you show up and say, well, title nine and start screaming that that's going to turn everybody off right away. Um, but I think, I think you piece it together. I think you start with the low hanging fruit I think you really kind of lay out a three to five year plan of how you can advance programs in your institution, potentially advance, advance your institution at the same time. Um, that's always going to get everybody sitting around the table. That's going to get their interest. 
um, we're sitting here trying to figure out how we're going to add 75 students, right? Or, you know, 175 students. Who's going to help us do that? I would say athletics, but I don't want to do it with existing sports because our rosters are higher enough. So if I can come with a solution and I can be a part of a part of what we're trying to do, historically, we've shown we can do it. We're pretty good at it. Um, I think that's that's always going to be a part of that. Back to joining committees, being known, not just within your campus, but within your conference and within the NAI, being present, being part of the conversations. Um, I said, I, I don't know as I've had an original idea in 20 years um, that I haven't learned from somebody else, that I haven't read somewhere, that I haven't talked with, with other administrators about and said, you know, what do you think about this? And some, some are like, well, I, you know, like I said, beach volleyball, you've added it. Do you like it? Do you hate it? How is that? How is it? Are your students retaining? Are they academically strong? Um, what's the fit for your institution? Um, and so it's, it's networking, again, back to the relationships, not just within your campus, but within your conference, within the NAI, within the senior women's leader group. Um, you're going to get a lot of great people who have done a lot of great things, who have a lot of great ideas, um, and who have been there and done that. And it's a matter of, like I said, teasing it out and seeing what is the best fit. How, do you, how does it work for our institution where it works out financially, works out academically, works out within your department, within your community? All those pieces have to fit for it to be a viable program. Um, and, and not just a viable program, but your current programs and strengthening your current programs. Um, how do you know when you're successful? Uh, I would like to say it's when uh, coaches stop complaining. Um, but we, we all know that might not be it. Um, as, as an administrator, I, my successes have been very different than they were as a coach. Um, I feel success in that, like both of our soccer programs, um, our women are doing fantastic. Our men are not doing as well. It's not lack of finances. It is not lack of facility. It is not lack of budget. Um, it's just a different recruiting philosophy. Um, so at the end of the day, I can look, I can look both coaches in the eye and say, you've got the same tools as the other one. My men's and women's basketball program, tools from the institution, you have the same ones. Okay. That's success. It might not equate to wins and losses, which will drive me personally crazy, but that's success as a department leader and a department level. I tell all of my coaches, I tell all of my student athletes, my job is to put you in a position to be successful. If I can't do that, then I'm not doing my job very well. And so I would say in my one-on-ones with my coaches, they're happy. They love their jobs. They love the college. Do they all want more budgets? Absolutely. Do they all want more scholarships? Absolutely. But I can, I can sleep at night knowing that I've got my programs equal. And maybe even some, like I said, on the women's soccer side, probably a little bit better. I've, I've got more. Um, I did ask a, a mentor of mine once. I said, "How do you how do you pencil this out with football? Like how do how do you make this work? How do you ever really feel like you've done what you can do?" And football is kind of the one that he said, "You know, he goes, I make them carry a ton of students." And he started adding JV programs for his men's side and not his women's side, and said, "I have my coaches at the salary that they're at." But the men, again, the numbers game, they've got to bring in more, but they have the same budget levels. So at the end of the day, as you're calculating out per student athlete, they're spending more on the women's programs, which, which is a model. I don't, it wouldn't be successful here, just geographically challenged with, um, with JVs, but it's a model that he said, he, he goes, that's how I sleep at night, is that I look at this and I say, hey, at the end of the day, I'm bringing in the students for the college, the the administration is happy we're maybe not as competitive as we used to be but it pencils out because per capita we're spending more money on our women's programs than we are our men's it's a way of doing it i don't like i said i can't pull that off just can't do it but um you know when i look at the college of idaho um you know our goal is to be a, our, our mission statement for our department is to create impactful leaders in education, in competition, in community, and in life. 
And if we can check those boxes and know that we're doing it equal across the board for our male athletes, our female athletes, and all of our programs, I feel pretty good about that. And right now, we're equal. We're equal. What the coaches really do above and beyond, that's, I think, where, where it sets them apart. Um, so one of our next goals is to really help those programs that aren't fundraising as well, that aren't putting more money into their programs. How do we help them get there? What does that look like? Right. And setting again for them, realistic goals to make sure that we're, we're checking the boxes for them, that we're helping them probably more than the programs that are doing well on their own fundraising. Um, if we can get them to do some of their own fundraising and to help their themselves, then that's success as well. Um, so that's kind of our, our next steps internally of, you know, we need to bolster the fundraising so some of these programs can have a little extra to do a bigger trip, to put maybe maybe some scholarship, more scholarship money to some student athletes that, that they don't have. Um, so th those are kind of next steps for, for us at the College of Idaho. But um, I, I think it's, like I said, my bosses are happy, my CFO is happy, I'm able to pay my bills, that's always a big thing. Um, but we've, we've made everybody equal in positions to be successful. Any questions, comments, thoughts? Kristen Gillette has a question. Do you wanna just go ahead and take it? All right. Hey, thanks so much. Hey, buddy. Um, okay, well, in my comment, I just said, I always appreciate you giving up your knowledge to all of us. It's always so great to hear from you. Um, so my question, when you are on the point of realistic goals and time frame, mm -hmm. how important is it to have that plan in writing in specifically for Title IX compliance? Um, yes. Great question, Kristen. Um, for me, it's kind of an internal document, right? Um, something that, that my associate in AD and I work on. Um, as we as we kind of evaluate programs, um, my controller uh, definitely is an integral part of that when it comes to budgetary things. Um, it, I, you know, it's always good to have goals, but can you actually reach them, right? And I think that's where, if if you can get to the table, right? And I report directly to the presidents. Um, that's an important piece of this. Is getting a president, presidents, whatever, or if you report to your dean of students, some do that, getting them on board with your plan. And then there's there's accountability. I'm big on accountability. My coaches will tell you that, my student athletes, and you know the great Pat Summit said, hold yourself accountable so nobody else has to, right? Um, and so what does accountability look like to you? And I think that's where you got to kind of tease that out is it needs to be an internal working document because the last thing you want is a coach coming back and saying, you said at this point in time, you were going to have me at this. Um, well, you know, you get hit with a global pandemic, everything changes, right? Yeah. Um, your, your institution has a financial crisis, everything changes. Um, you end up with a turnover in, in your present role uh, or your, your one of your deans, like, all of a sudden the values and the priority might shift and change. So while it's, it's like I said, for me, it's definitely an internal document. Um, my CFO and I are on the kind of on the same page in terms of he's over our buildings and grounds. And um, I just last year got added to the buildings and grounds committee, um, which is a little, again, kind of like, how did we not have representation before this? Like, are you kidding me? Uh, but we didn't. Here, I was at a fundraiser last week. Uh, one of my friends who's, who's an architect, who's in charge of our overall campus strategic plan. I said, how come, he goes, I hear you want to meet with me. I said, yeah, you're doing a strategic plan and we haven't talked. He goes, well, what do you want? I said, I'm going to take over the world if they're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> that was my next question in regards to the master plan. Yeah. Like, how do you work yeah. yourself into that? And it shocks well, me that athletics is not always included in that when you so strategic planning is just what I came from, right? And they're still going and I'm missing the part on retention, which is fine with me. Um, but but you have to be at the table and you have to, and I kind of, I pitched a royal fit about it because again, Kristen's had the privilege of seeing me coach. So she's seen me pitch a royal fit. Um, but, but that was the same thing. I said, are you kidding me? 
I said, I'm talking about adding beach volleyball and we haven't talked about where we would even put it. I know where I would put it. Does it make sense? They're talking about moving my softball field. What? I'm talking about enhancing my softball field. If I'm going to go invest all this money and in three to five years, you're going to say, yeah, but we're going to move it to this spot. Then I'm not spending the money right now. Mm-hmm. But what's, what's, what's the time frame in that? And so again, being part of the committees, being part of the conversation, our buildings and grounds meets next week. And, and then we report out to the board um, and I will be bringing some of these things up. And thankfully I've got the relationship with the architect, right? Mm-hmm. Um, who's, who's a friend. And he's like, he goes, yeah, I can't believe you weren't on the initial conversation. She goes, I've already given them one run. I said, how, how does wow. this happen? I said, yeah. how have you not talked to me about this? And he says, I probably should have thought about that. I said, yes, you should have. Um, And and so making sure that you're part of those conversations and when you're not sticking your nose, right? Like Mm -hmm. there's there's no excuse for athletics not to be at the table, not for what we're trying to do. Now, again, as as we all know, you get a change in leadership and a change in priorities and everything can flip on its ear. And all of a sudden athletics is not the priority. We want to put all of our investments into I don't know, you know, for us, it could be, you know, intramurals, outdoor program, um, you know, where is the next president's priorities? I, I told somebody one time, I said, well, nobody would come in here and, and turn on athletics. Like that would be, that would be a big mistake, mm-hmm. but you never know, yeah. right? You never know. So if you're at the table, having all these conversations and, and, and kind of weaving your way into it, um, that then it happens organically. When a president comes in, they could want to change it and everybody else will defend you. There's no way my, my vice president enrollment would let somebody be not pro athletics. He, mm-hmm. We can't afford it. We cannot afford it. Um, so making yourself, like I said, an integral part of what's happening on your campus. Um, I, w- I will say that one of the, the conversations we had in retention. So I've got 131 football guys. Like that's too many, right? But at the end of the day, we're paying the bills. Um, the charge for my coaches as we've grown through grown our rosters is making sure that the bottom end of your roster fits the academics of the institution. They need to fall in love with the institution because when they don't retain as an athlete, they need to retain as a student. And that has been a big step for us in terms of people defending athletics. Um, and I hate to say defending, but we're all on that hot seat all the time, right? We, it's easy to blame us. We are the low hanging fruit. We didn't do this. Your athletes didn't show up at that. Um, but if you can get that inner working group, that senior staff to understand you and, and defend you a little bit, then that protects you a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it does get you to that next conversation or to the table or the year you, you miss your mark, right? You missed your mark on recruiting. Well, we've hit it every other year okay, we get a pass this year. Um, but but you, you again, if you start to establish those relationships, is that my CFO loves me. Um, one, I'm, I'm paying, I'm making enough money, I'm fundraising enough to pay my bills, which our overages are just dumb. Um, but he sees me out there doing it. He sees me taking the reins of our own marketing campaign because I'm not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to solve my problems for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do, do it myself. I've got somebody ready to build me beach volleyball courts. If I get the green light, I'm working on getting a sponsor for softball, right? Those are two women's programs that if I can get everybody else on board, make a big difference for my department, but also the institution. Yeah. Um, Can I ask you one more question on fundraising? Yeah. So I'm curious in regards to title nine, if you've got one program, uh, you talked about the overages. I'm amazed at just how much additional (laughs) dollars it's taking. But um, I've got one program, fundraises a lot, can cover all that, and just can't, right? So does that play into Title IX compliance? Uh, Do I need to pay attention to that? I think the only part you need to pay attention to, Kristen, is what efforts your department is putting into the fundraising of each program, right? My men's basketball, they've got it down to a science. I do nothing for that. Absolutely nothing. Um, my previous coach kind of set the stage. My my coach who came in after him picked it up and, and has run with it. Um, I do nothing to facilitate that. Now, my women's program has done a couple things, but it just, it's not to the same level or capacity. Um, she's done fine. She pays her bills. 
but I don't help either one of them. And so I think as an institution, again, I can look myself in the, in the mirror at night and say, you know, it's not like I'm out there beating the streets for men's basketball and saying, yeah, women will figure it out. Um, you know, I, I think from our seat, kind of the bigger concern is, is those programs as they're charged with doing it on their own is those coaches that don't pick up and run with it at all. Um, part of that, uh, honestly, is, you know, when I look at, at a couple programs, I've got a part-time coach in our men's sport versus a full-time coach in our women's sport. So what are the realistic expectations? Um, you know, I, I, I just took a beating in this meeting that my golf team didn't hit their numbers. My ski team didn't hit their numbers. I got two part-time coaches. They got other jobs. So if you want the numbers, again, one extra person probably pays for their salary and they'd be happy to be here full-time or two extra student athletes covers it. So where are we going to invest? Well, okay. If we're not going to invest there, then we can't really be upset about it. They're, they're nice add-ons, but they're not, they're not, they're not moving the needle for me financially. Um, but I, I think as long as, like I said, if you're investing it time, effort, and money into fundraising for one, you better be doing it for the other. Okay, any other questions? Um, I wanted to just call real quickly on uh, Danita or Fache. They're both from uh, Langston University and Fache is also um, on our task force for uh, this committee. And just wanted to share a few things um, in particular, just about some of the, the main points. Um, Danita being a mentor too of Pache's and wanting to just really focus a little bit on some of the talking points from uh, what Regan shared today and some of the, the things that kind of resonated with um, the mentor and the mentee, and then also Fache is moving into the senior woman leader role. Well, uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I'll, I'll go first and put uh, Fache on the hot seat, I guess, after me. But um, Reagan, you, you had some just absolutely uh, amazing talking points today. Uh, just wanted to say like even I guess I'll say being a, a, I won't say an old administrator, but a seasoned administrator, uh, some of your talking points are just right on. Just like if I had an amen corner, I would have been sending you some. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you <laughs> but um, one of the things that I want that's first on her list is about relationships. And I'll share with everybody about four or five years ago, my uh, president appointed me to the Chamber of Commerce, or the, the, the representative for the Logan County Guthrie Greater Area Chamber of Commerce. And so another VP moved out and he was just like, you're, you're here around campus. I think this would be a good um, spot for you to do. And at first I was a little, a little bit leery because this is gonna be another um, thing for me to have to worry about, you know, once or twice a month. But I'm telling you that has been probably one of the biggest I guess, um, boosters uh, for me, not only in the relationships, I I've been exposed to so many business owners. Uh, we're in a small community, we're very rural out here in Logan County, but Guthrie is probably the ne nearest big city for us, about 11 miles. So that's where the major Walmart, all those other things are, eating establishments. But um, we have about 350 chamber members now. And I cannot tell you, if you have an opportunity to even start putting your foot in the door with um, local chambers, please do it. They start seeing you. Uh, just recently, we have a $5,000 uh, sponsor that's going to cover our, our uh, Hall of Fame luncheon in a couple of months. And it's really been based on relationships cultivated, especially over the last um, three years. And so right now I'm currently serving as the chairperson for our board of directors. But um, those are some things that you really miss, you, you really um, may take for granted. And it is a little bit extra work, but it has definitely paid off. Uh, the same thing, we were able to have a bid from one of our chamber members that had to remodel some flooring in our men's locker room. So it's like you always have this Rolodex of people that you already have a little bit of a relationship with um, to call on when you have, just to even bounce around ideas. So I think that's one of my biggest things. Uh, Reagan talked about getting on committees and those things. 
and um, <laughs> think outside of the university, but also in your community. Maybe you have a Rotary Club, Lions Club, all those other what things. Say. Service when they, Yeah, when they have a vested interest and they know you, I can't tell you how they're willing to support. And even it might be small checks or whatever. Um, and one of the things that we started giving away, we have chamber coffees. And when it was Langston's time to host, we gave away ad space on our, our athletic website. So um, don't um, think about, it's not costing you anything, but also use that as a possible a tool. That's something that they want, especially maybe our, our big time of the year is homecoming. That's probably our analytics for our website. That's probably when we get the most hits throughout the year on our website. So um, don't forget to use those things that uh, mean a lot um, to other people that really won't cost you a lot to use. That's pretty much all I have. No, if I could add on to that, Danita, great, great points. Um, and but but as you, there was one thing that you said in there that I think was really important that it's taking you three years yep. to get to this right, and, and and that's that's what it's the it's it takes the time, and you have to invest. You have to invest in yourself or in your your other administrators. Um, I just. That's funny. I just sent my associate AD to the chamber lunch yesterday. I said, you need to be at that. He's new. He's, he's new to the position. Um, I'm personally a member of destination Caldwell. That is, and I've been on that board since I got out of coaching. So I think it's like eight, nine years now. Um, that is responsible for the re revitalization of downtown Caldwell, which is good for the community and it's good for the college. But like you, I'm at everything. Um, and, and it's investing. It's investing in the community because they're going to invest back in us. It's investing in in your elementary schools uh, because those kids, you know, they need it. It's investing in them so they'll invest back in us. And so, so constantly building those partnerships. So that's a great point, Anita. Thanks. Thank you. One last comment from Fache, and then if there's any other questions, so we're going to move over to a couple of um, great opportunities for for senior women leaders on the call. Um, good afternoon. My name is Fashe Kinslow. Um, I'm the as Assistant Athletic Director here at Langston. And uh, Regan, I, your presentation was great. I was sitting here and texting my boss and I was like, you know, we're doing some of those things. Um, definitely the relationships, just to reiterate, um, I think more of my relationships are here on campus, just like you were saying, you know, with um, administration and enrollment, just anything that I can do to help them when they can help us um, to move process a little bit better. Um, another thing that you had um, talked about is realistic goals. You know, we do um, strategic plans every year during our professional development. Each sport has to sit down and work on their strategic plan. And I told Paige a couple of weeks ago, I was in the strategic planning class and I'm glad to be done with it, but it was very helpful just to um, outline um, your plan. To, uh, what is the college uh, strategic plan and how can I align my plans along with the, the college and the department? And um, I know Kristen, you had talked about fundraising, you know, of one department, sport is uh, raising money and the other one isn't. Um, what we have decided here at Langston, each department, each sport, I keep saying department, each sport has to raise so much money. So you're not getting one sport raising $500 and another one raising $10,000. So each sport um, has a goal um, set by um, the administration and the president of what they have to reach each year. But um, very um, great tips. Um, I was jotting down notes and I think you did a great job. Thanks, appreciate that. All right, well, thank you everyone for all those great questions. Um, I'm just gonna pivot real quick. Last uh, month, we talked about our partnership with the Women Leaders in College Sports. The, the association um, has never done this before and they're doing it for the NAI and they're giving all of our senior women leaders um, and your athletics departments um, a, a six month opportunity to get a $100 discount to become a member. Um, I think this is one really important if you're just getting started as a senior woman leader. They, like uh, Regan said, don't reinvent the wheel. They, they've been doing this for years. And uh, as soon as you sign up for a member, they give you a packet that will really help you in this particular role. They have multiple circles that you could be a part of uh, and opportun opportunities. So 
We also have this link on our website. Um, we will, uh, of course, we have this recorded. We'll put this on the website. But the discount code is NAIA2022. Uh, we're not publicizing it. We're only doing it directly messaging with you all um, because, again, NCAA doesn't get this. So they didn't really want um, everyone else to, to see this discount. So take advantage of that. That also gives you an opportunity to come to Kansas City is where their national convention is going to be. Lori Thomas and myself and the uh, task force is going to be working on what does that, uh, we have a two-hour session just for NAIA and small college athletics. So if you have some ideas of what you'd like that to look like, or you also have other ideas, you'd like the lunch and learn. Um, a lot of you, I think we had 75 of you give us um, input on what you wanted out of these lunch and learns. So just know that we can pivot at any time. We can put something in front of you that's more cyclical. So I just wanted to make sure that I, I, I mentioned that. Um, oops, I'm kind of a little bit out of order here. Um, wanted to also just mention that we do have resources on our NAIA RISE page. The RISE Committee stands for Respect, Inclusivity, Support, and Education. Uh, we will be um, helping you all by adding uh, these Lunch and Learns, but also other things. Uh, we're hearing from multiple individuals. Chesney Salee is going to be going to um, a conference uh, meeting this next week, along with myself, another meeting. Um, there's a lot of conferences that are doing things to support you all in these roles because we we know that this this position is intentional to have a woman at the table making these uh, executive decisions but we also know that some of you have probably 10 other responsibilities and how do you juggle it all so we are here to help and to support you just to keep thinking like if we don't have the answers we will find someone who knows who knows the answers like Regan when I heard her talk about title nine I'm like yeah girl you're gonna be the first one that's gonna talk on on this one so I think that was the number one topic for you all um on this resource page we also have the Facebook community so if you have things that you personally want to share with others um join that uh, Lori and I will uh, accept you immediately so just sign up for that's where we kind of share some some ideas with each other and then um, I'm going to turn over to Abby because right now the eligibility center is is kicking. It's hot. We got to get these kids uh, eligible to play. So she's got a couple of things that she wants to talk to you all quickly about and what you need to know as um, a senior woman leader. So I'm going to turn over to Abby. Thanks, Paige. Yes, as Paige mentioned, we are coming off of our fall season, which is majority of August goes into September. So coming off one of our busiest times here in the eligibility center. Um, I'm sure everyone on this call has interacted with the eligibility in some sort of way, so I won't take up too much of your time, um, but I did just include some basics um, about what we do here in the EC. Um, so as a reminder, we process all first-time student-athlete eligibility, and then on the slide here, you can see the types of students that we process. So freshmen, freshmen with a break, transfer students, and within those student types, we process domestic and international student athletes. Um, so going off of, you know, the resources that Paige um, was speaking about that are available to you, I did just want to highlight what resources the Eligibility Center um, has available to you all. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Hope this works correctly, like I envisioned. Perfect. I think it worked. So, on your, if you have access to our Play AI website, your view might look a little bit different. Some of you might have access to your shortlist, which will include all student athletes um, for a specific sport. You're able to view where they're at. In the eligibility process, what information you need to like help them out with, what they need from you all, what they still need from us, et cetera. You're able to view their student profile and we try to be as communicative as possible with you all and the students. So you guys know exactly where they're at in the eligibility process. And then your registrar or even maybe some of you whoever are able to upload transcripts are able to See the student list tab, which gives you access to upload students at your institution, or maybe a student who has previously attended your institution who might need a transcript. 
Um, if they're not on your student list, there are ways for you to upload a transcript to our portal through these two different fields. Um, there's more information here, what I was really wanting to highlight on our resources tab. So we try to provide as much information as we can that we know you or the student might have questions about. This is a great resource for you all to view, you know, costs for student athletes, how to send their documents based on what document they need to send, um, our basic eligibility rules here. There's some great infographics that we've created for this um, to kind of make it more visually make sense for you all and you know some of our rules that get pretty complex. And then with um, Play AI, there's several different features that you and your staff on campus are able to take advantage of. Um, and here you can view more information. The resource guides is um, very important as well. We have our EC membership guide here and then our guide for college bound student athletes. Um, for U.S. students and international. And then this video here walks you through the student registration process. So if you're helping a student get registered, you can view this video so you know exactly what they're filling out and what they need to fill out. And then another important resource that we get a lot of questions about and um, this wrong button. We actually, um, look at this document a lot ourselves. Um, if a student needs a new application for you, so maybe they did not receive a decision for the term that they were seeking a determination for, um, their profile is canceled during our annual cancellation, which we do have coming up on October 1st. Um, this document shows you and the student what um, the process is to start a new application. And the other question we get a lot, I oh know, let me get back to that. Okay, I lost the page now, I have to the whole thing, um, is our situation analysis document. Um, but that is also on that resources page and you're able to view several different scenarios where does the student need to come back to the eligibility center or are there eligibility handled on campus? It's a pretty complex document. Um, so definitely takes time to read through and kind of see which scenario fits your student. Um, but as always, we're here to help you all. Feel free to reach out myself or Ellen or our customer relations team. Um, we're here to help you all, especially during you know, this busy time of wrapping up our fall students and preparing for the winter and spring sports to get started. Um, so that's all I had, but definitely reach out if you all have questions and we know how eligibility can be some sort of process for each individual student. So we are here to help you all. Does anybody have any questions? Just open it up. I didn't see anything in the chat, but feel free to chime in. Okay, um, I'm just going to end with with one one thing here. Um, wanted to just uh, because this is uh, what you all had asked for. Um, the next topic is going to be um, assist AD and senior management with strategic planning, kind of going with what Regan said and decision making for athletics departments. And then we will give you an update from the national office on the selection committees and just kind of understanding that process, how we go about doing that. And I will not be presenting on that because I do not, do not know the details of how all of that works. I know it's it's a lot of individuals, though, who help with the selection process. Um, any questions for the task force? We've got uh, Ted Bridenthal who's on here. I think Lori had to bounce out. Uh, Fache, anything that you'd like us to make sure that we tackle next month? Or um, we are going to have a series of senior women leader track for a uh, convention. So if you don't have it on your calendar, we'd love for you all to come to New Orleans at the end of March. I believe it starts March the 30th. It's a little bit early this year. Would love to have um, everyone there. And uh, hope, hopefully you guys can also come to the uh, Women Leaders Convention, which will actually be here in Kansas City. 
So if we have no other questions, you guys can eat your dessert for lunch and uh, we will hopefully see you all next month and really appreciate Regan's help today, giving us her expertise. So thank you. All right, this has been fun. Thanks everybody.